question for you as we get started here. I'll give you a couple hints. What weighs less than 13 grams in your hand? It shares the name of the robes that the Pope and his staff wear in Rome, yellow robes. It spends its summers in the hardwood forest of Eastern United States, and it spends its winters in South America. The answer? A plethonotary warbler. And this beautiful bird, and that's me, <laughs> if you, a prothonotary warbler, affectionately called the swamp canary. And that's me, and I sir, have the honor of serving as the chief conservation officer of the National Audubon Society. It's the world's largest conservation organization devoted to the conservation of birds. And in our mission statement, it says that Audubon exists. All of our volunteers and staff, our donors, the people that breathe life into the mission, that mission exists to protect the places birds need today and tomorrow. But really, a picture is worth a thousand words. This location is Audubon's Bidler Forest in South Carolina, 20,000 acres of old growth cypress tupelo swamp habitat. That's a mouthful. <laughs> and that habitat, in addition to storing literally massive amounts and quantities of carbon and serving as a filter, a massive filter for the watershed uh, that purifies water for millions, it's also one of the world's largest colonies of plethonotary warblers. That little bird, before he flew into my net, had traveled 3,000 miles over the course of three days from a Colombian mangrove, just to get snatched up in a net, blood drawn, feathers picked, all in the name of science. I, I assure you that he made it out of there just fine. But you complain about your commute. Birds fly. <laughs> Think about that, right? Birds fly across cities and towns. They fly across uh, oceans and beaches. They fly across and they, they dodge buildings. They dodge other birds. <laughs> All in the name of creating these threads of connections across our communities. Our CEO, Dr. Elizabeth Gray, says it best. Birds are the most powerful sentinels and symbols of the natural world, of our planetary health. I remember when that message got to me. I can pinpoint for you the moment I was awakened to the wonder and splendor of birds, and it completely changed my life. It threw my career plans off. I was probably 19 years old when it happened, uh, when I was at the University of Minnesota. Um, and if you don't already know this, birds have a real special way of capturing our imagination. They're truly special. And I've got to ask you, have you accepted birds into your life yet? <laughs> We call this a spark bird. You know that bird, that's my spark bird. A spark bird is the bird, it's really a moment uh, when you first intentionally allow yourself to be wooed and wowed by the splendor and joy of birds. For me, it happened in a wooden trailer out on the prairie. Now, oh, give me a second. <laughs> in that trailer, we, 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 put, we staged these probably 40-foot-long trailers, and we call them blinds, and it gives us a chance to have a more intimate look at birds, particularly grouse species like the prairie chicken. Now, I grew up in the city, not in the country. I grew up in Dallas and Los Angeles. You can probably see what I relate more to. Um, and we didn't 
take family camping trips. We didn't go out into nature. And so back then, I didn't know a prairie chicken from a pineapple, to be honest with you. <laughs> but being out there in the uh, blind that morning, I just never forget. We had an incredible, they still do at the University of Minnesota Cruxton, an incredible international program. And so when you go into these, these blinds in the morning, you go in before the sun comes up, and you're in there with complete strangers. And we're surrounded, we're separated by language barriers, we're complete strangers. But what captured my imagination, which, what grabbed my attention, it has not loosened its grip for 17 years, was that we all shared an awe at the splendor we were watching. We all could relate to the joy of the birds and their, you know, their mating uh, ritual that they were uh, engrossed in. That was extremely powerful for me. Um, it sparked something in me, and that's why we call it a spark bird. They connect us to, natu uh, to nature, and equally as important, they connect us to one another. I like to say that birds are our playlist in nature. They're the songstresses and troubadours of some of our most indelible moments and memories. Um, you can ask the people that are paid to tap into our minds, into our hearts, to make us buy things, to make us watch things. Just ask Hollywood. They know a thing or two about this. <laughs> What's an ominous jungle scene without the laughing kookaburra? White lotus, anybody? <laughs> right? Or a country road <whistles> without the beautiful song of the Western Meadowlark. If you ask me what my spark bird is, it's a prairie chicken, but my favorite bird, the bird that articulates and brings to life my time out on prairie trails and out in the prairie, it's the Western Meadowlark. You can close your eyes when you hear a bird song and think of a thousand scenes in movies. But it's not just movies. It's not just commercials. It's your life. It's your memories that are tied to, you're brought back to, by the sound of birds. It's the cardinals and the robins who journey great distances back to your backyard, heralding spring every year for you. It's a snowy owl prowling across the barren, uh, snow-covered uh, fields in the winter, search for a meal. Birds aren't just background noise. They have a starring role in yours and my life. I had a chance this year uh, in the spring to travel to Chile, to Concepcion. And right there at the mouth of the Andilan River, I observed this individual bird. I think I actually took that picture. Now, it's not a flashy name, the lesser yellow legs. It's almost like an insult someone gives you in gym <laughs> class, right? It's not that flashy, but this leggy bird really tells an amazing story. Uh, in March, the yellow legs are busy entertaining us coastal beachgoers in places like Concepcion, Chile, and Panama. Uh, and they'll travel then to uh, Colombia, to the Coca Valley and beyond. But I want to double click with you on this individual bird, uh, which we've tagged and tracked. These are a couple of our interns down in Colombia who were, partook in the tagging exercise. And we're going to follow that bird that they tagged. When it left Colombia, it made a nonstop journey across the Gulf, landing on the shores of Texas it skipped over to Louisiana, and then it headed north to the prairies of Kansas, to the tall grass, and then it hopped to Grand Forks. 
It hopped over to the Grand Forks Airport. There's a patch of about 100,000 acres of prairie there. We call it the Ojata Prairie or uh, the Grand Forks County Prairie. It's an old beachhead of Glacial Lake Agassiz, an ancient lake there, and the sandy soil, it, it really works best for native prairie. And so the bird made its way there. And then to the boreal floors where it breeds. Thousands of miles, needing perfect timing, no room for error, just feathers and an abundance of faith to know that they would make that journey. And after a brief stop of breeding and, and nesting, they'll turn back around and 8,500 miles later, they're back in Chile and Colombia. Isn't that amazing? This bird's survival, however, isn't just a, some solitary accomplish, some historic, his heroic feat. It's an act of connection, of shared stewardship. It's a relay of people and places across many places in the Western Hemisphere. Wetland managers in Colombia, ranchers in North Dakota, indigenous land guardians in Canada, ranchers, birders, all connected through a bird's life. The journey, it's not just about going from point A to point B. It's about how the threads of the natural world bind us together. A bird's journey, really life in of itself, is never a solitary one. We are all connected. It's a tapestry of connections between people and places and the animals, like birds, who pass through them. How do we know this? I'm telling you about these birds. How do we know? How do we follow? Um, where do we gain those insights? Well, there are thousands, hundreds of thousands of scientists, millions of citizen scientists and community scientists who are building the data. We're, we are living actually in the renaissance period of bird conservation data and ornithology and science. One of the ways that we do this is through a partnership called the Migratory Bird Initiative, where we've tracked the journey of birds to help conservation efforts like no other. This is a great idea wearing this jacket in this heat with these lights. Um, we use satellite, <laughs> satellite tags, citizen science, and truly cutting edge technology to bring to life the journey of birds to help us pinpoint where we need to work. Again, it's an par incredible partnership. One of the hardest things sometimes is to share information, share data, wonder how it's used. And this incredible consortium came together so we could answer the most pressing questions affecting birds because what affects birds affects us. Look at this. This is a map of tagged yes lesser yellow legs. Look at that journey. Each glowing yellow bulb uh, is life. It's a journey, a risk, a possibility. Or the black pole warbler. This tiny bird, weighing less than a pencil, flies nonstop across the Atlantic for three whole days, all to bring us a sweet song. Or the ruby-throated hummingbird. This male here, um, with its beating heart that beats 1,200 times in a minute, racing across wild landscapes in the Americas. These birds aren't just surviving, they are thriving because they know exactly what they need. They need what you need, clean water, clean habitat, a place to stop, rest and refuel, but there is also a harder truth that we must lean into. We're in a race against time. Raise your hand here if you were born uh, after 1970. Yeah. Since 1970, we've lost three billion birds. One in four birds in North America have disappeared. Songs that are not singing anymore. Birds fill our life with song and sound. And they're screaming to us through their silence. 
not because they've forgotten how to fly on the wing, but because we may have forgotten how to listen. You know, so many things that we do, buildings that look harmless, uh, birds fly through glass, uh, harming themselves. 100 plus million birds are killed just by flying into buildings that they didn't know were there. And birds are truly resilient. Ranchers losing availability of grassland habitat to raise cattle. That grassland habitat, we have a saying, no grass, no, no cows, no grass, no birds. The connectivity is truly powerful. But there's a silver lining in all of this. There's still hope. There is always hope. Did you know that there are 96 million people in the United States that are birders? Maybe it's one of you. If you haven't found your spark bird, uh, what are you waiting for? You know, communities that are separated by languages, time, geography may not share the same air. You know, we don't actually breathe the same exact air. We may not drink the same exact uh, water from the same sources. But in many cases, we are actually connected by birds more than anything else. Individual birds that are sharing our communities. I want to give you and leave you with, with one hopeful story. Uh, in northern British Columbia, the Casca uh, indigenous are working in partnership to establish an indigenous protected area and conserved area that permanently protects 10 million acres of that lesser yellow legs uh, nesting habitat. These Casca ancestral lands are situated within the Mackenzie River Basin and supply vital habitat for birds and people. That's one of the many miracles that are out there that I'm excited about every day to come to work, no matter the challenges. And what do we do with this knowledge? Well, I would say that we act upon it. We protect the places that birds need because our voices, your voices, the actions that you take can truly change the wor world and bend that bird curve. Because if we follow birds in the, their life cycles, they'll just trace through our backyards and our skies. We might just find our way home because it all begins with birds, but it never ends there. Thank you.